السلام عليكم تريل بليزرز هلا تريل بليزرز هلاو تريل بليزر سو ثانك يو سو ماتش فور بين هير اند تو اتند اور سيشن وي نو ذات وي هاف lots of many other amazing sessions but you choose our sessions so thank you so much and let's start fatima with our favorite topic who we are well i'm fatima and i'm a four time certified senior developer at accenture spain working with selfor since 2018 and i'm really happy for having here with you and share my knowledge with all of you And for me, I'm Hussam Saudi. I'm Salesforce Technical Architect working at uh, Capgemini, Morocco. And also I'm a Salesforce MVP, first Salesforce MVP in Africa. And also I'm leading of the Casablanca Developer Group. And also I'm the founder of uh, North Africa Dreaming uh, Conference. So, you know about us and we want to know more about you. So please show your hand if you are a developer. I see we have many developers in the room. <laughs> How about administrator? How about architect? Well, well, we have also architect Fatima here in this session. <laughs> the last question is, who has heard or used record ticket flows? Many people know what is record record ticket flow, but we can notice that some of them didn't show their hands. So we will introduce you what is and also we will do the comparison. But first, let's start with the agenda. Well, uh, we are going to explain what is flow and apps uh, and some use cases comparing both tools. Uh, besides, we'll also show some flow limits and some helpful resources. So this is about our agenda. And um, after this session, uh, you, you are going to, to be able to choose the best tool to, to make a difference with your Salesforce box. So let's start. What is Flow? So for us, a Flow, it's like a Swiss Army knife. So we have one tool, but we can do many things. It's a declarative tool that we can help us to automate uh, our businesses. Also, it's the present and also the future of automation. As you know, uh, workflow rules and process builder will be deprecated. And also, since uh, 2012, uh, Salesforce changed a lot about the name. And the current name is Flow Builder. And in each release, Salesforce introduced many, many, many cool features that you can use and each release you need to learn more and go to our, uh, let's say, company and share with our community as the smartest person in the room. And we have many type of flows. We have screen flows, schedule triggered flow, auto launched flow, platform event triggered flow. But today we will focus only on record triggered flows because this is title of our session. Well, record trigger flows is the only flow type containing the triggering event, which means that it can be uh, run automatically when a record is uh, created, or updated, created, or updated, or deleted. And that's why it will be the best option to convert our existing workflow rules and process builders into flows when they are finally deprecated. Also, we have two options when we want to run it. We can do it before or after saving the record in the database. And how about APES? APES is a strongly typed um, object-oriented programming language that uh, lets developers add a business logic to most system events, including button on clicks, related record as days, visual for pages, lightning web components, etc. And as a language, uh, APES is multi-tenant aware, preventing the code from monopolizing shared resources, basic to use because its syntax and semantics are e easy to understand, uh, basic to test as it provides a built-in support for unit test creation and execution and version. 
So what is Apex Trigger? So Apex Trigger is an Apex code, and uh, we, can, we can use Apex Trigger to automate our businesses and each execute after or before an action. For example, before insert, update, delete, and also after in delete. But the most question that we need to answer as a developer is when to code. So when we need to code. So as a developer, we should answer our, this question. And we have what we call golden rule in Salesforce. So we have a golden rule in Salesforce. And the golden rule is keep it simple. Keep it simple. We have many tools, but we need to choose a simple tool to get our job done. As a developer, as an administrator, as an architect, we need to ask some questions. What is the most simple tool, Fatima, right? Yes. <laughs> Do this rule apply to every single, every Salesforce org? Or we may have some exception, maybe, we don't know. So let's see. Well, uh, as you can see in this graph, the strong point of flow versus APES is its less complexity. But APES provides higher functionality. Why? Because we, with Flow, we don't need any developer to build something with the Flow Builder. But with uh, um, sorry, and any, any administrator or even a super user uh, can do it. But with APES, we can do anything if we have a developer that can go. And now, are you ready for an exciting showdown? Let's see what happens. I didn't hear a Fatima noise. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> so, uh, we divide our this slide in uh, three sections. We have two tools, Flow and Apex Trigger. We have six use cases, and we have four grades. Available, not ideal, roadmap, and not available. So roadmap, it means it will be in the future. So Salesforce is working, but we don't have yet this future. And we will talk about same record uh, field updates as a use case, high performance batch processing, cross object CRUD, and also we will talk about asynchronous processing, complex list processing, and custom validation errors. And we will see new cool futures about custom validation errors. It's right, Fatima? Yes. Well, the first use case is same record field updates. If we want to, to trigger an automation as a result of updating a field and that updates another field in the same record, we shouldn't do it uh, after the record has already been saved whenever possible. So in, the, in our list, um, we only have two possibilities before save flow triggers and before save apex triggers. Why? Because uh, before save updates are faster than after save ones for two reasons. The first one is that the, rec the record field values are already loaded in memory, so they don't need to be reloaded again. That uh, saves a lot of time. And the second one is that the updates are performed by changing the field values in memory. Um, so do, do, we don't need to do a lot of um, database reads and writes. So adjusting these uh, field values before the record is saved, we eliminate costly DNL operations and also reduces the number of uh, recursive saves because we only have to save the record once instead of making that date and then saving the record again. Now we have, let's talk about the second use case. So the high performance batch processing. So both flow and Apex trigger can do it. But we have Apex trigger is preferable for some reasons. So let's discover. For example, when we have a complex logic or any time we need to work with map like or set like because we don't have this kind of futures in flows. So and also when we want to work on a, with safe transaction safe point we need to work with Apex Trigger because this uh, say, uh, transaction safe point, we doesn't have it in flows. And we can use flow in some simple uh, complex logic, 
But we need to keep in mind that we have some limitation. For example, Schedule Flow can currently do batch operation on up 250,000 records per day. So we need to keep it in mind. And also batch size limits uh, need to be less than 200. So keep it in mind. And uh, you can take uh, pictures about our uh, slides, just to remember. And now let's talk about the third use case. Yes. Uh, now I'm going to talk about cross object crowd. If you want to create, update, or delete a record, a different record from the one that triggered the transaction, this is going to require a database operation, no matter which tool we use. And in our list, the only tool that doesn't support this kind of operations is before safe flow triggers. Um, how about the rest? Well, technically speaking, the Apex runtime requires less time to perform um, to perform any specific database operation than the flow runtime, but the difference is, is significant. So, if you want to work with flows, you should um, reduce uh, the number of DNL statements against the same uh, record as much as possible. So, not executing a lot of database reads and writes. And in more complex use cases, like for example, conditionally updating several fields in the same record, you could consider using a record variable to temporarily store these values in memory and then processing all of them at once in an only update component at the end of the flow. Now let's talk about asynchronous processing. So both Flow and Apex can execute logic asynchronously. So when, for example, when we have a separate transaction or when we need to work with external callouts, so we can, wo we, we can work with both. For example, if we want to work with Apex, we can implement asynchronous logic inside of Kubernetes class. And we can use it also with Flow. And with, uh, we, if we want to work with Flow, we need to use what we call a run asynchronous path. And for mixed use cases, it means working with Flow plus Apex, we need to work with system that's queable job. So the choice should be uh, the complexity. Uh, if, if we have more complexity, we need to move more to a Salesforce trigger. Well, next case is complex list processing. Certain tasks, like in place data transformations, can be pretty cumbersome in flows for a couple of reasons. The first one is that there's no way to reference an individual item in a flows collection, like in Apex. And the second is because the loops are executed serially in flow, even in batch processing scenarios. So if you have DNL or SQL in a loop, this is not going to be bulkified, and this is going to increase your chances of hitting governor limits and impacting on performance. Even if Apex triggers are always an option, we also can be find useful um, using invocable Apex to extend flows and combine the power of both tools. And the last use case, custom validation errors. And we can notice a nice gray, the new logo, root map. So before Winter 24, we could only use custom validation errors with Apex Trigger. Why? Because in Apex Trigger, in Apex, we have what we call added error methods, and we don't have added error method on flow. So this is before Winter 24. The good news is after Winter 24 release, it's available. And you can use it to custom uh, your uh, error messages. And we will see some limitation, but it's available and you can test it. And it's still something new. We have some, uh, some observation. So this element is available only on record triggered flows. It's, avail it's, it's not available in other kind of flow. Also, the limit of the error message field is uh, two, two, uh, 255 character. And also, we can use only one error message per page 
and also only one error message per field. Also, it's not possible to use link in your error message. So this is some observation. I'm sure that we have more, so you can explore after. So this is something that I like a lot, and I test it. Here you are a recap about the comparative we did previously. Uh, so we don't have enough time to go into detail. Please take a, take a picture if you you like che to check later. I'm waiting for a few seconds, <laughs> only to yes. I can see a lot of phones taking pictures. We have also some uh, workflow uh, limitation that we need to keep it in mind. For example, version per flow, how active flow per type we need. So check also pictures about this slide and learn more about the limitation of flows later. We have also some best practices. So when we are working with Apex Trigger, please, 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 please use one Apex Trigger per object. So this is one of the golden rules. But when we are working with flow, we need to work with subflows. And please create many flows and use subflows. As a developer, as an administrator, as an architect, it's hard to maintain this kind of flow. It's very hard. Who is in the room can maintain this. Uh, now, uh, let's some take away. Flow and Apex are preferred no code and pro code solution on uh, triggered automation. Also, use before uh, flow triggered for same record field update. Also, use after save flow trigger for other declarative automation. And use Apex for high performance batch processing on highly complex logic. And please use uh, subflows when you want to work with flows. We have some resources. <laughs> yes. Here you are some helpful resources in an only post so that you can practice and learn more after the session. So please take a picture or scan the QR code. And now, shukran, Trailblazers. Gracias, Trailblazers. Thank you, Thank you. Trailblazers. <laughs>